Hello. So, this video we are going to be introducing the idea of logarithms. So, as an example, uh, if we have something like 2 to the x equals 4, well, this is pretty straightforward, right? We can say, okay, 4, that's really 2 squared, and then that 1 to 1 property means I know x is 2. Great, no problems. A little less great when we're looking at something like x equals 3. All right, 2 to the x equals 3. Because here, mm, 3 is not a nice power of 2, right? So, like, now what do we do? And in fact, even if we try to do this graphically, right? Like, again, 2 to the x equals 4, this works out pretty well because 4 is sort of a nice spot in the, on the y. When we come down to the x, it lands exactly at 2, right? But with 3, uh, not so much, right? 3 is a nice y value, but it lands somewhere weird between 1 and 2 on the... Uh, on the x-axis. So what do we do with this? Well, this is exactly why we have logarithms. This is literally why they were invented. Um, so log base b, what this is sort of supposed to represent is the inverse, the property of inverting that exponentiation step. So the log base b is the inverse of applying an exponent to some base b, right? That's the b there is sort of not an accident in both places. So in particular, if we have log base b of x, that's the inverse of b to the x, okay? So if we're looking at something like 2 to the x equals 3 and we want to sort of solve this to some value, well, we would apply log base 2 on both sides because the whole point of the inverse is that they would unravel each other, right? So on the left, this log base 2 of 2 to the x, the log base 2 and the 2 as the base sort of undo each other and the exponent sort of is the only thing left on that side. So I end up with x as my sort of left-hand side, and my right-hand side is just what it is, log base 2 of 3. Now, if you're wondering, like, how could, I can, how could I sort of compute that? Realistically, if it's not a nice number, you can't. This is actually sort of one of the big things about, sort of historically about math, is that there were these giant books of tables to look up logs. That's literally how they would do it. And that's one of the reasons why calculators being invented, believe it or not, was such a big deal is that you could actually do it in a calculator and not have to look it up in the book, and that was much faster. So it's one of those things where, like, you really just have to leave it in this form, and that's totally acceptable for this class. So looking at this then, we have uh, what's usually referred to as the logarithmic form. So we have that log base b of x equals y. But again, logs are sort of artificial in some sense. They do crop up in sort of natural uh, areas a little bit here and there. So like how earthquakes, uh, the power of earthquakes and things, these are usually logarithmic scales. But in practice, they're sort of so artificial that they're hard to wrap your brain around. So a lot of the times, an easier way to think about what's happening, even if it's not necessarily part of the solution process, is to take that logarithmic form and convert it into the exponential form. So really what's happening here is you're taking some sort of b as a base on both sides and canceling the b and the log base b. But regardless, if you have something like log base b of x equals y, that is equivalent to x is b to, to some y power. Right? So it's sort of inverting that process. Now, this can be useful if you're trying to figure out uh, sort of the value of a log where it actually does have a nice value. Because again, most of the time they don't, but sometimes they do. So if I have something like log base 5 of 125, I may not know what that is, right? Like just looking at it, log base 5 of 125, I have no intuition about what I'm supposed to do here. So what I can do is label it as a, as a value like x, right? So I'm like, all right, log base 5, 125, I'll call that x, so equals x, and then I'll put it in exponential form. So then I'm like, okay, that would be equivalent to saying 5 to some power is 125. But now I'm thinking, ah, I have better intuition about exponentials. 125, that's really 5 cubed. But now I have the same base, so really what that's telling me is x equals 3, right? So at the sort of original step where I'm like, okay, log base 5 of 125, I don't really have any intuition or understanding of that thing, I don't know sort of what to do here. If you convert it by setting it equal to something like x and convert it to the exponential form, you can get a better intuition and understand what you should do, okay? So using that uh, is sort of one way of sort of solving logs when you have a numeric log, if it turns out to be helpful. As another note, sort of just as part of the introduction here, there are certain logs, and in particular natural logs, which are the logs with base e. So here, if I have log where my b 
is actually the letter E. <laughs> it's annoying to say, but log base E is natural log, and it gets sort of a special notation because it sort of comes up constantly. It's so common that sort of over time mathematicians shorthanded it into LN. That's why that's like that. But I, I want to really stress here that like there's nothing special about natural log in terms of being different from other logs. So when we learn properties of logarithms, we learn like you know different rules and different ways of manipulating logarithms that work sort of with every base. It also works with natural log because natural log is just a particular base of a log. So a lot of times students will sort of memorize a set of rules for log base B and then another set of rules for natural log, not realizing that they are literally the exact same laws, <laughs> right? So like this is a thing that just to be very clear, natural logs are just another kind of log. So everything about natural log works for log. Everything about logs with any kind of base works for natural log in terms of how you can manipulate these things, okay? So what do we do? Well, we introduce the idea of logs, these sort of kind of honestly artificial sort of function type that's just designed to undo exponents. And in particular, exponents exponents where like the exponential form doesn't have a very nice solution, like two to the x equals three. Like that's not something you can sort of solve nicely. And so we end up expressing it as this log base two of three or something like this. So that's why logs exist. At the same time, it turns out that logs have a bunch of useful properties we'll talk about. Natural log comes up a lot because base E, it turns out, comes up a lot in calculus, which we mentioned in the exponential section. And as sort of a, a side note, as you're building intuition about these things, it can help to take a log that you don't understand and sort of make it into uh, the exponential form just to sort of wrap your head around it. Use something, use that exponential form as a sort of more natural thing that you sort of recognize what's happening. Not necessarily as a solution step, but just so you can get your head around what, what it looks like, what you're trying to solve for, that kind of thing. Okay, so that is that.